So this is a thermal chemistry, and uh, we're going to discuss exothermic and endothermic reactions. Okay, there are two types of reactions with change in heat energy. Eh? We classify the chemical reactions according to the change of energy, eh? the exothermic reactions and the endothermic reactions. Okay, so these are the two chemical reactions that involve change of heat energy. Then uh, let's have a look at this, uh, the details of these two uh, reactions. Uh. So for chemical reactions, there are exothermic and endothermic reactions. And what is exothermic reactions? An exothermic reaction is a chemical reaction where energy, the energy here is referring to the heat energy, uh. Com chemical energy converted to heat energy. Okay, so where energy or heat energy is given out to the surrounding eh, or released to the surroundings. Uh, let's see this diagram. Okay, so this is a chemical. Eh? This is a chemical. So when reactions occurs, uh, energy is released to the surrounding, and the immediate surrounding is the water. So when heat energy released to the surroundings, the surrounding is the water. What will happen to the temperatures of the water? The surrounding is the water. So what will happen to the temperatures of the water? So the temperatures of the surroundings will increase. Eh? Okay, the temperatures of the surrounding will increase uh, during exothermic reactions. And the, the, the surrounding is the, the solutions or the liquid. Okay, because uh, in some book, they draw the diagram in this way. Okay, they, they give you a test tube, okay, and then they draw the solutions and then they write, they draw something like this. So to indicate that uh, heat energy is released to the surroundings, then when students see this, uh, okay, they see heat energy re released to the surroundings, then they think the temperatures of the solutions will decrease uh, because it looks like the energy go to the air, right? Okay, so the temperatures of the solution will decrease, and this is not true. Uh, okay, that's not correct. So this is not correct. Okay, so what happened is that uh, the energy is released from the chemical. This is a chemical. The energy released from the chemical to the surrounding and the immediate surrounding is the solution or the water itself. Therefore, the temperatures of the water will increase. Eh? Okay. Then for endothermic, uh, it's a chemical reaction where energy is taken in. Taken in means absorbed okay, from the surrounding. Uh, the surrounding is the water or the solution. So if the heat energy is absorbed from the water, what will happen to the temperatures of the surrounding or the temperatures of the water? The temperature will decrease. Eh? Okay, it will decrease. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and uh, make sure that you remember this. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a frequently asked question also uh, in exam. Okay, so they will ask you uh, for uh, exothermic reactions, what will happen to the temperatures of the solutions, and for endothermic reactions, what will happen to the temperatures of the surrounding. Okay, so exothermic, the temperature increase, endothermic, the temperature decrease eh? okay examples of uh, exothermic reactions uh, this is a reaction that release energy uh, there are a few examples neutralization is one of it okay neutralization neutralization is the reactions between uh, acid and alkali right or acid and uh, base oxide okay so for example the uh, dilute sulfuric acid is neutralized by sodium hydroxide aqueous if you mix sulfuric acid with so, uh, sodium hydroxide, okay, and then you will find that uh, the temperature of the mixture will increase, uh, okay, uh, it's either warm or hot, okay, mm, to show that there's exothermic reactions. Okay, now uh, let's write the equations of the reactions, okay. What's the formula of uh, sulfuric acid? H2SO4, that's correct, H2SO4, okay, H2SO4. And then it reacts with sodium hydroxide. So what's the formulas of sodium hydroxide? NaOH. That's correct. NaOH. Huh? NaOH. Give me the name of the product or the formula. Either give you the name of the formula. Okay. Name of formulas of the product. Na2SO4. Okay. That is sodium sulfate. Huh? Okay. That's correct. Sodium sulfate. Huh? Okay. Because uh, the sodium ions huh, will react with the sulfate ions huh, to get sodium sulfate. And at the same time, uh, water is formed, right? Okay, because uh, for neutralizations, the product is a salt and water. This is a salt. Huh? This is a salt. Salt and water. Heat is released. Okay. Now, is this equation balanced? 
it's not balanced, right? Okay, not balanced, then uh, uh, we should balance it. Okay, not balanced because we have two sodium here. So we put a two sodium hydroxide. Uh, two sodium hydroxides, we have uh, two oxygens, two hydrogens, okay? And then we have another two hydrogens here. So totally four hydrogens, uh, four hydrogens. But here we only have two hydrogens, uh, so therefore we need to put a two here, okay? So that we have four hydrogens. Okay, four hydrogens, uh, and then so we have two oxygens. Uh, uh, we have a two water, therefore we have two oxygen. Okay, now uh, this is balanced. So now this equation is balanced already. Yeah? So that is how we write the uh, chemical equations for uh, neutralization reactions. Now they say when it's a crystal, yeah, crystal, eh? CuSO4, then dot 5H2O, okay, 5H2O, and then it's blue in color, okay. But then they say anhydrous copper sulfate eh? powder is white in color, okay. So can you see that? Eh? So what's the difference between these two? Okay, what's the difference between these two? Anhydrous means it's, it's, a, it's a dehydrated. Dehydrated mean is, means that it's dry and no water. Yeah, it's dry, no water, okay? So it means that copper sulfate, eh? copper sulfate, eh? the color is white. If it's a CuSO4, eh? copper sulfate, the color is white, eh? okay? But if you add some water to this copper sulfate, then it becomes blue. Okay, this is called hydrated copper sulfate, eh? you see? How do we know it's hydrated? When you see this dot 5H2O, eh? okay? Uh, this is a hydrated salt. Okay, this is a salt and then it's a dot, uh, certain number of H2O, this is called hydrated salt, okay? So it means that copper sulfate is actually uh, white in color. Copper sulfate is white in color. The one which is blue in color is hydrated copper sulfate. Okay, hydrated copper sulfate. Okay, so that is the difference between uh, dehydrated, dehydrated copper sulfate and hydrated copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate, blue in color, and a dehydrated copper sulfate, white in color. Let's say you have this uh, white, white dehydrated copper sulfate, okay, which is a CuSO4, eh? CuSO4, and then uh, you add water, H2O. Okay, and then it will form a hydrated copper sulfate, CuSO4 dot XH2O. Okay, now in SPM, you don't need to memorize this number five, or this number, number five, you don't need to memorize this five, okay? You just tell that this copper sulfate attached to a certain number of water molecule, that's all, okay? So you can put dot XH2O, eh? you don't need to put five H2O, okay? And then here, to balance the equation, we put an X here, okay? Uh, this is dehydrated copper sulfate. Eh? This is hydrated copper sulfate. And this dehydrated copper sulfate is white in color. And uh, this hydrated copper sulfate is blue in color. Blue in color. So in this process, eh? in this process, heat energy is released, okay? And this is an exothermic reaction, okay? This is hydrations of copper sulfate, hydrations of copper sulfate, or uh, water react with copper 2 sulfate. So make sure that you know the difference between hydrated copper sulfate and uh, dehydrated copper sulfate or anhydrous copper sulfate. Anhydrous means it's uh, no water or dry uh, copper sulfate. Let's see this one again. Dissolve sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide in water. So when you have uh, sodium hydroxide powder, you add some water, okay? Then it will form sodium ion and hydroxide ion, okay? And uh, heat energy will be released, okay? If you hold a test tube, okay? You hold a test tube, you will find that the test tube is warm, okay? Uh, so does the potassium hydroxide. When you add some, add this sodium hydroxide powder into water, it will form sodium ion and hydroxide ion, and then uh, heat energy is released, okay? And then uh, reactions between alkali metals like uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, and water. Uh, this also release heat energy, eh? okay? Reactions between reactive metals and dilute uh, acid, okay? Like uh, magnesium with nitric acid. This one is also exothermic. Combustions of methane is also exothermic. All combustion is exothermic eh? because combustions release a lot of heat energy, right? So all combustions reaction uh, is uh, exothermic, okay? Now, others uh, exothermic reactions that you need to know is uh, rusting. 
okay, resting. Uh, dilutions of concentrated sulfuric acid or nitric acid, eh? okay, means that if you have a concentrated acid, you add water, heat energy will be released, okay, it's also exothermic. Uh, crystallizations of sodium thiosulfate and change of state also, eh? okay. Um, you need to memorize all these reactions, okay, all these exothermic reactions, eh? because in the exam, they will show you the reaction and then they will ask you whether this is exothermic or endothermic. Now for this uh, reactions, acid with carbonate, calcium oxide with water, okay, uh, and also these three reactions, I would like you to write the chemical equation. So this is a reaction, okay, this one because they already tell you it's calcium oxide with water, so I do not specify the, the reactants, okay. This one, okay, this, these are the reactants, hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate, okay. Check your answer here. Let's proceed to the next one. Okay, that is the the endothermic reactions. So this is examples of exothermic reactions. Okay, example of endothermic reactions. Uh, these reactions also you need to memorize. Huh? Okay, these are the endothermic reactions. First one is the decompositions of carbonate metals by heat. Huh? If you heat carbonate metal and then it decompose. Huh? Decompose and this is an endothermic reactions. Okay, uh, you heat this uh, carbonate, eh? so the carbonate absorb the heat. Eh? So this is a uh, endothermic reactions. Okay, uh, for example, uh, decompositions of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonates. The formula is uh, Ca. Okay, Ca, CO three. Eh? Calcium carbonate, and you heat it. Uh, if you heat calcium carbonate, what are the products form? And carbon dioxide gas is released. Eh? Calcium oxide, that's correct. Okay, okay that's correct. Eh? Okay, it will form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Eh? And this is uh, this is an endothermic reaction. How about nitrate? Eh? Nitrate. Okay, nitrate. Uh, for example, lead nitrate. Eh? Pb NO three. Okay, lead nitrate. If you heat it, if you heat it, then uh, what are the product form? Lead oxide and nitrogen gas. Uh, lead oxide is correct, okay. Lead oxide is correct, but not nitrogen gas. Nitrogen dioxide, yes, that's correct, okay. Nitrogen dioxide, and one more. Other than nitrogen dioxide, there's another gas will be released uh, when you heat nitrates. So what's that? Oxygen, that's correct. Oxygen gas. Okay, so when you heat nitrate, it will decompose to form oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen. Nitrogen dioxide is a brownish gas. Eh? Okay, the color is brown in color. Okay, so let's balance the equations. Um, so we have two nitrate, eh? so we need to have two nitrogen dioxide. Two nitrogen dioxide. Uh, here we have six oxygens. So here we have two times two, two oxygen. Okay, not enough. So, so we need to have uh, two lead nitrate with uh, four nitrogen dioxide. Okay, four nitrogen dioxide. We have eight oxygens plus two oxygen here plus uh, two oxygen here. So totally twelve oxygens. Okay, then this equation is balanced. So this is the equation for uh, decompositions of nitrate lead. Sorry, lead nitrate by heat. Okay, and this is an endothermic reaction. Eh? Okay, so remember the decompositions of carbonate and decompositions of nitrate metals eh, are endothermic reaction because you, 
you, you need to heat it, then only the reactions occur. Eh? Okay, means that you need to absorb heat, then the reactions occur. Dissolve potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, or ammonium chloride in water. Okay, so this is also endothermic. Uh, for example, let's say we have potassium nitrate. Okay, if you dissolve potassium nitrate in water, it will form potassium ion and nitrate ion. Eh? Uh, this is endothermic. Ammonium nitrate, ammonium nitrate. Okay, you add water, it will form ammonium ions. NH4 and then uh, nitrate ions. Okay, and to make ammonium chloride as well. Ammonium chloride. Okay, and then you form ammonium ion and chloride ions. Okay, so all these three uh, process or three reactions that absorb heat from the surrounding and therefore is uh, is an endothermic reactions. Uh, it absorb heat from the surrounding. The last one, reactions of heat on hydrated copper sulfate. Now, just now we have uh, dehydrated copper sulfate. Eh? Okay, you add water, then it becomes hydrated, and that is exothermic. Eh? Okay, and the uh, reverse of the reaction, let's say you have copper sulf hydrated copper sulfate, eh? CuSO4 dot XH2O. Okay, so this is hydrated, hydrated. Uh, copper sulfate okay and it's blue in color it's blue in color okay and then um, if you heat it if you heat it then it will form a dehydrated copper sulfate or anhydrous copper sulfate eh? okay dehydrated or anhydrous and uh, this is white in color white in color and then uh, water will be released uh, this is endothermic reactions. Eh? Uh, others like a change of physical state from solid to liquid or uh, liquid to gas. Okay, from solid to liquid, it absorbs heat, eh? so it's endothermic. Liquid to gas also absorb heat, eh? so it's also endothermic. Okay, so these are the examples of endothermic reactions.